Welcome to Michelle's Making. Hope you're ready for coffee, crafts, cookies, and cocktails. Let's get going. Welcome. Welcome back to those of you who are returning. I really do appreciate it. I'm enjoying that pumpkin spice in my coffee again. Oh, I love this time of year. Today is National Chianti Day, National Welsh Rarebit Day, and also National Food Bank Day. So there's an opportunity to give back, which is so important this time of year, to give back to your local food bank. So volunteer. We're going to enjoy our coffee, make it a great one, and get going. Today we're going to make some delicious cinnamon rolls. I got this recipe from tasteoflizzytea.com and I'll link that in the description box. You'll use warm milk, instant yeast, eggs, butter, salt, granulated sugar, and all-purpose flour. It's important that your milk is warmed to between 105 and 115 degrees. Not warm enough, it won't activate the yeast, and too warm will kill the yeast. I get it here to 108 degrees, and that's just perfect. Next, you sprinkle the yeast over top of it, and then you'll add eggs, butter, salt, and sugar, and mix with the beater paddle on your mixer. that's lightly mixed you'll begin to add your flour mixture this recipe calls for four to four and a half cups if you start with four cups and mix until it's slightly incorporated and then you're going to switch to your dough hook Once you switch to your dough hook, you may have to add a little more flour. You want this to be a kind of shiny but smooth dough while it's working. I ended up adding about a quarter cup more, um, maybe not quite a quarter of a cup, and I got just the consistency that was needed. Let the dough hook do its work for five or six minutes. Once that's done, you'll see that there's still a little dough on the bowl, that's okay, and it's formed together in a ball. You pour it into another bowl that's been sprayed with non-stick spray. You'll cover it with wax paper or uh, plastic wrap or even a dish towel and let it rise till it's double in size. In the meanwhile, make your filling, brown sugar, cinnamon, and butter. I apologize I didn't show mixing it, but I just stirred it by hand. Once the dough is ready, you're gonna put it on a floured surface. Don't knead it much, just kind of get it into a rough rectangle shape because you're gonna use a rolling pin that's been floured and roll it out. You want it to be about 12 inches wide by about 24 inches long, give or take. It doesn't have to be exact. You just want the basic rectangle shape because once you get that shape made, you'll spread your cinnamon topping over the entire dough surface. Next, you're gonna roll the dough beginning with the long side. I went back and forth between using my fingers and the back of my hand. I felt that was a little easier to get it started. Once the roll was going, it was a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. 
Next, you're going to cut your dough. Start in the center, cut the center, and then cut in the center again of each section, and then down to three slices in each of those four sections because you get about 12 rolls out of this, and that fits perfectly into a nine by 12 baking pan. You're going to cover it and set it aside and let it rise to double in size. The next trick is one I just learned, and it is amazing. Using heavy whipping cream, about a half a cup, you pour it over the entire dough in between the rolls and on top of the rolls. This keeps them amazingly moist while they're baking. Have you ever heard of pouring heavy cream on the rolls to keep them moist? Let me know in the comments. The icing is made with cream cheese, butter, maple extract, and powdered sugar. You can adjust the, the amount of powdered sugar to get the consistency that you like. I like it a little bit thicker consistency, but the other trick is to wait till it's completely cooled before you ice the rolls. I like to put a little thin layer on while the rolls are hot and then wait and put the full icing layer on after they've cooled. Let me know in the comments what type of icing you like on your rolls. And there you have it, our delicious cinnamon rolls. Our first craft today is a pine pick cornucopia. I picked this cornucopia up at Goodwill. It was regularly priced $1.99, but red tags were 50% off that day, so for a dollar. And the pine cone picks, which are really cute, I got at Dollar Tree. And I believe I got five of them, four or five. Um, and I apologize, at the end I did put another pick in that I didn't show here. But started out with the floral foam and one pick I did not snip apart. I just spread the cones wide on the bottom. And then I began with the individual sprigs that I had cut off of the um, entire pick. And I went a little bit shorter with each row going up so that when I got to the top, they were very short stemmed. I did end up also giving a dry brushing of, with my Rust-Oleum chalk paint and linen white to the cornucopia basket that I didn't show here, and I apologize for that. I guess I just uh, lost some footage or maybe I forgot to even film it. But I just inserted all these assorted pine cone picks, and like I said, in the end, I put in another pick that I'd gotten at Dollar Tree right in the center, as you can see here. And that's it for the pine pick cornucopia. Now for a pumpkin garland. I am using this wired uh, jute rope from Dollar Tree and a pack of pumpkins I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I started out by threading the pumpkins on and then I didn't like the way it looked. So I decided to go with these ping pong balls I had. I painted them in the color fawn and threaded them between each of the pumpkins. So I put the buffalo check pumpkin, a, a ping pong ball, one of the white pumpkins, a ping pong ball, and so forth for the entire garland. Once they were all threaded on the jute wire, I then took some strips of painter's cloth, some canvas painter's cloth that I had gotten. I strongly recommend keeping a painter's cloth in your stash because it comes in very handy for lots of things. See here, I folded the strips in half and then fed the ends through the loop part around that jute um, wired rope. 
and did this between each of the pumpkins and, and ping pong balls. And that's really all there is to this pumpkin garland. Do you use garlands in your home decor? Let me know in the comments. I picked up three little pumpkins from Dollar Tree and I pulled out a glass candlestick holder that I had in my stash and taking the stickers off because you'll need the holes in the bottom of these to stack them and some maple leaves that I had. I began by painting the candlestick holder in, uh, I believe this color is sage. And the pumpkins, I painted one in the porch yellow one in cashew and one in fawn i believe was the other color but i painted all the pumpkins and i also gave them a dry brushing of the antique wax paint remember when you're crafting you can choose any color that you like or any color that matches with your decor And as usual, my handy dandy heat gun to help speed up that drying process. Remember when you're dry brushing, you can go as light or as heavy as you like with this. I went a little heavy there and I went back with the cashew and kind of uh, did a little dry brush of it over the dark spots and I like the way that looked better. How do you like it? Do you like a lot of distressing or just a little bit? Let me know in the comments. I had picked up a bag of assorted leaves and to be honest, I can't remember if it was at Hobby Lobby or Dollar Tree. I think it was Dollar Tree. I actually like the ones that were a little bit longer over the ones that were shaped like actual maple leaves, but they were a little too long. So I did do some snipping at the ends and it was gonna work out perfectly because it was gonna be under the pumpkin. And for the ones on the top, I actually did cut them down completely, but it still looked right because I glued them together and then put a raffia bow over it. But anyway, I glued these with hot glue as you'll see, placing the leaves in between there. I was just playing around with it a little bit uh, to see what I liked or how I wanted it to look before I actually glued. At first, I made a little shoestring bow out of one of the strips of the canvas drop cloth. But since I was really going for the rustic look, I decided I didn't really like the way that looked. And I decided instead to use a bow made out of raffia from the raffia hula skirt that I've had. Another great thing to have in your stash, but I just wrapped it around my hand a few times and then wrapped it and tied it off with a piece of uh, jute twine. Next, I took a piece of nautical rope from Dollar Tree and wrapped and glued it around the bottom pumpkin and the candlestick holder. Trimmed up the raffia bow, and there you have it, the rustic pumpkin stack. The final craft for today is an autumn sign. I had this 
bag of round wood pieces that I'd picked up at Hobby Lobby quite some time ago. In fact, it was back when things, you could still use your coupons. So this $4.49 bag of wood cost me a couple of bucks. But I began by gluing them together. And once that was done, I glued on the back of each round the little square wood pieces that you get at Dollar Tree. This will act as a stand and will help the piece stand up on its own since I'm using it as tabletop decor. Next, I printed out the word Autumn on Cricut using this pretty font, cut the letters individually, and using transfer tape, I transferred them to the wood rounds, spelling out the word Autumn. Once all the letters were applied, I peeled back the transfer tape. Remember the trick to this is kind of zigzagging it back and forth as you pull it back. I love how this turned out. Our autumn sign. Well, you know what time it is now, folks. It's time for that adult beverage. Today's cocktail is a caramel kissed Russian. For this, you'll use Kahlua, caramel kissed vodka, and half and half. It's so simple and easy to make, and it's really yummy. The recipe will be in the description box, but you add the Kahlua and the vodka over rocks in a rocks glass, and then top with half and half. That's it. There you have it, our caramel kissed Russian. Enjoy. Well, folks, that's it for another week. Thank you so much for staying with me. I appreciate that. And a thank you to my subscribers and thank you for sharing the video to help the channel grow. I really do appreciate that. Don't forget to take time to stop and smell the coffee. Make it a great week and I'll see you next Friday.